If this is what you look like on your day of riding, this video is for you. Okay guys, we are talking about all things are under layers, right? We'll call that as kind of the, you guys get it, that we work in the rule of threes when it comes to layering, right? We need a base layer, a mid layer, and our outer layer. And throughout the channel's history, we've talked many, many times about, well, we've had all kinds of videos, right? In terms of being prepared as we go into the backcountry, we've talked about my, my favorite picks uh, in terms of outerwear, and we've never really taken a deep dive into all things, what we're wearing underneath all of that. And so today we're gonna break down not just in my opinion, like my favorites, but just trying to understand why we would layer. So most of the time we talk about things being from head to toe and today we're gonna to talk things kind of in reverse. We're gonna go from toes back up to our upper layers. Um, so a, a personal opinion uh, and one that has just worked for me in the, man, countless amounts of time in the backcountry, regardless of the temperature, regardless of the snow, things like that. When, we, when it comes to socks, I, I'm a big fan, and this is probably back from my skiing and snowboarding days, I wear a relatively thin sort of ski sock, right, or a ski boot sock, something relatively thin. I'll wear that, but then I double up with like the mammoth sock, all right? And before I make this thing like 100% about climb, I, you guys understand, like I, I ride for climb, we do a lot of testing for climb, a lot of the development I'd like to think from some of this gear, both from the layering side of things and the outerwear, comes from guys like me that we have our hands and feet in the snow a lot. It's what we do as a job. Um, so anyway, there are gonna be other products that are out there that work for you guys. In terms of this video being just about layering itself, I don't want you guys to think that it's just, even though there's a lot of climb stuff out here on the table, Go with what works for you, right? Like this is a Fox River sock that I just really, really like the fit of it. And then I will combine that, like I said, with this heavier weight. And this is the Climb Mammoth sock. The two pair of sock for me um, in the Adrenaline and or the Havoc boot, um, there are times as a guide when I'm doing quite a bit of just feet in the snow where I'm standing, might be walking, might be explaining something to a snowmobiler, might be running after a sled that's loose, might be uh, running alongside of a snowmobile, trying to help that person get their sled up on edge, something like that. But my feet are in the snow a lot. And time and time again, the two pair of sock rule for me, not unlike we talk about with layering, having that base, that mid and that outer, the two pair of sock for me provides enough insulation, enough warmth, that given the boot and also the temperature of the day, I rarely, rarely, rarely have uh, cold feet. And you guys will also know, and there's quite a few clients that have come to Next Level that have the new, like a new battery app, uh, operated sock. And I'd say all the power to you guys, use technology to its fullest so that we can turn those okay days into awesome ones. All right, so moving up from there, and again, we won't dive into the boots themselves. Um, that could be for a separate video. You guys have probably heard me talk about different boots and different insulations and things like that, but under layers, we got the two pair of socks and our, our base layers, guys, from the bottom, Climb makes a, a brief, right? And I guess maybe the important takeaway to all of these things that are touching our skin is that rule that it's relatively form-fitting, fits you know, relatively tight. It's some sort of synthetic blend. So part poly, part some other fabrics, you could use merino wool, things like that. But a brief, and then they've got, and you guys can just jump onto the website. We could even have some information in the drop down menu of this video where you can dive in. And I'm not gonna go into every piece that every company makes, but I would tell you that as a whole, most of these things are some sort of poly synthetic blend that's moisture wicking in terms of the activities that we're doing all of these things, they kind of are there with this promotion of the activity. Like we're gonna be moving, we're gonna be perspiring, we're gonna be working hard, right? And so not wearing cotton, not wearing these things, they're gonna hold on to that moisture, especially for later. Time and time again, do I even go out in the backcountry and I just skipped a step and I'm wearing a t-shirt or something like that? Remember that you go out there with this intention of, you know, what I call going for that like quick little rip where I'm only gonna be out there for X amount of hours. How bad could it be that I'm wearing that t-shirt? Well, when stuff goes sideways, you have 
a failure on the snowmobile, you have a failure to a human, something like that, and you're forced to stay out there for a lot longer, I'm just telling you that having these things that are moisture wicking and they're protecting you from that moisture, these are also microbial, they're protecting you from bacteria, things like that. It'd be reasons why we'd wanna wear some sort of synthetic blend tied against our bodies, right? So you've got the briefs, you've got a, a negative 1.0, 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, all the way up the chain. You guys can do a bunch of your own research. This is some of my go-to stuff that's just right out of my gear bag, depending on the temp of the day. Something that Climb developed just this last year is this pant right here. And this is a pretty cool one where, you know, this is the override pant. And you can tell that it's kind of a quilted, puffy style of upper. Basically, you're like, you're wearing like a down pair of shorts and then it's got a relatively thin low, lower area. What's so unique about this is that most of us are wearing some sort of knee protection. And I'll show you guys what I wear. I am using the, the Mobius braces. Um, this started with me this, just this last year. I had a few incidences where I could tell that I needed to kind of step up my game in terms of protection where for years and years and years, it was just about a knee and shin guard, which if you're not going to this, you guys get it, that I still highly recommend not using what a lot of these companies are kind of claiming as their knee protection and actually ditching those and getting into something that's, you know, got some real protection. When you come down hard onto the running board or any other part of the sled, maybe even hitting trees or something else, I would just tell you that actual knee protection uh, and then going even that step further into an actual brace that is just holding that knee in place. Knock on wood guys, I haven't had too many incidences over my years where I would be worried or had some sort of knee injury, but this is serious knee injury prevention. And having said that, when it comes to what I'm wearing under it, it's kind of nice. And you can tell with this override alloy pant here that it's thinned out in and around that knee and shin guard area, which makes it kind of nice. These are very protective, but they're also very warm. And so if you're wearing something 3.0, heck, I've seen guys wearing jeans. I've seen people even wearing sweatpants and then trying to put that on and then these over the top, your leg area in that space is gonna be hot and it's gonna be uncomfortable and you're gonna sweat and then sooner or later you're gonna be cold. So ideas like this are pretty dang smart and while I'm on the protection uh, topic, you know, all of you guys think about that in terms of how you're dressing under your outerwear, this is still considered a layer, all right? And then as we get to our upper layers, if you're those that are wearing a vest or some sort of a backpack or a protective device like a tech vest, or some sort of, uh, well, anyway, chest protection, know that that is equal to a layer as well. So if you're wearing that stuff to protect yourself, know that if I'm gonna stack the deck, I'm gonna go base layer up here, plus a mid layer, plus my outer layer, plus some sort of protective, I could end up being and running relatively warm as well. So it's just all things kind of mapping out your day and remembering that it's super important with what we start and that's in our base layer. All right, moving from our bottoms up to our top stuff, guys, uh, lo lots of different options. Again, the important takeaway to all of this is moisture wicking, uh, keeping your skin, uh, you're gonna sweat, but having that moisture wicking property of whatever synthetic poly blend. So no matter what you're wearing that's tight against your skin, and I keep referring to tight, you kind of want to wear this stuff you know, anytime I put on long johns or something that I'm wearing is that complete base layer hugging my skin. Not unlike when you're working out and you've got something that's relatively tight to your skin. I feel like that's important, right? That gap in between there, it's not necessarily a bad thing, but it's pretty nice to wear those things that you know are sort of protecting you from the rest of it. So is base layering considered a, like a protective or an insulated layer? And the answer is no, it could be and should be about as thin of material as it can be, knowing that you're gonna layer on top of that. As a snowmobiler, because we're wearing that knee protection, there's very, very few times when I pack something that is extra in my tunnel bag or backpack that has something to do with my lower layers. Could you? And the answer is certainly. You could do a number of different things because we have all kinds of storage options, either in our backpack or on our snowmobiles. But oftentimes, I'm not nearly as worried about my lower half of me as I am my upper. So starting from a base layer perspective, they've got, again, guys, negative 1.0 all the way up to 3.0. So we've got, and then we've got these aggressor shirts. This one's relatively thin. 
This one's a little bit baggy, but could you wear this as like right up against your skin? And the answer would be absolutely. This would be a great one. Tuck it into your lower layers and boom, you are ready and kind of have your base layers taken care of. This is another example of something sort of merino wool. And that's personal preference. There are certainly things that are within the lineup and just stuff that I've tried over the years, whether it was some sort of poly blend or some sort of merino wool. Heck, they even have merino wool briefs that you're wearing right against your private parts. And that actually feels pretty good. But it's also personal preference there. So anyway, just going through some of these options, as we get into some heavier layers, right, we're still in that base layer spot, but we want to start really thinking about that cold temp day. And maybe a great way to do this is to sort of identify three different types of days. All right, you guys know, and you've heard me talk about it time and time again, the importance of our forecast. So your local forecast in your area, we don't only have to look at those things in terms of the current snow conditions or the current AVI conditions, we can also look at the forecast is temperature. So temperature, as they put the forecast out, heck, you're looking outside, most of our vehicles are giving us the temperature that's the right now temperature. We can also use the forecast as a trend or maybe an outlook of the day of what that temperature is gonna do. In the back country, there have been many, many days where it was really cold in the morning and got even colder in the afternoon. And we wouldn't know that unless we were looking at the forecast and having those guys that are out there putting this stuff out there, this information, like that that's what was gonna happen. And in, in that case, right, we'd wanna be really thinking about what we're using as a layering system for the day. There's also the other side of that where it's a really, really cold morning, but the power of the sun, that power of that inversion, we're gonna get up high into the back country and now we're gonna get a rapid warming. When we get really warm outside and the snow is starting to change, our bodies are starting to change, it would be equally as important to have the ability to take what we were wearing because it was cold that morning and shed that, hence the layering system. So moving forward guys, and this is some stuff that is new from Climb. Um, we've got an aggressor shirt and they call these like the aggressor shirt fire. And I'll show you why. This is a pretty cool, another little piece of technology. You guys can tell that I've got battery powered heat, not unlike the GTX gloves, where we've got those three different settings. Obviously the red being the hottest, the blue is kind of in the middle, and then the green is just keeping us warm throughout our day. Remember guys that it's battery life, it's not magic. Just like we've learned with the battery operated gloves or even battery operated just about anything, you run that thing full power, full boost, you're probably not gonna get a ton of time out of it. Would you or could you keep that thing powered down just for that emergency? Well, the thing is still a relatively decent insulated aggressor shirt. You just now have the option of having that battery powered to it, which is really, really cool. All right, so a, another example of a great mid-layer mid is this new override vest, and they call this one the E-Fire, because again, just like this aggressor shirt, we've got the addition to the battery powered heat, so heating your core area I just wanted to show you guys a quick example of the battery that comes with this vest and they're USB chargeable. So you just charge these guys up. You'll pop it in right there. As you turn this on, this will show you your battery life. And then as you move up here, this stows into a pocket and then boom, we've got our kind of our high, mid and low settings to our vest. And what a great, great way to where we can have one item really help us regulate sort of our core temperature. And what I really like about a vest is that there are oftentimes not unlike how we talk about where our core heat is coming from, but my elbows, my arms rarely get cold. And so the idea that you could still wear something thin like one of these, you know, tiny little 1.0s, maybe something merino wool that was relatively thin out onto your arms, but you wanted your body, your core area to stay nice and toasty. This is another killer way for us to regulate our temperature when we're out riding. All right, as we continue talking about the importance of layering, especially in that upper part of us, there are certainly times, and I think throughout my, my life as a snowmobiler, even just my life outside, you know when you didn't dress for the weather, right? You know that you went out, you thought it was a quick little rip, and you're already cold, and you're thinking about what you've carried with you, what you're already wearing or not wearing, and then what you carried with you, which in a lot of times you're thinking about your backpack, your tunnel bag, any other storage that you might have, and you don't have the right equipment. That's a really scary situation, especially if you're out and you have a problem. 
you have something bend, you have a, you know, something changes to where you're not actually making the quick rip out to get back out and get your body warm again. I wanted to talk about this next layering or these next layering ideas. Um, but before I do, I gotta bring this back in guys, the importance of having, if we do have an emergency, and it was just relatable because holy smokes, man, if you were out there with a down snowmobile, maybe a couple down snowmobiles, this idea that I have not dressed, I have not layered properly, having the ability to call out, right? If I can't get out, whether I could build a fire or not, Man, the idea behind being out in the backcountry freezing cold and not having the ability to layer because I didn't pack well enough, the idea that I can call out and get help. So the Spot Global Phone, and then you guys have seen me and I've been a huge advocate for any one of these. I've been working with Spot for a number of years, basically since the start of Next Level. The idea that I could send a quick message to my wife or to whoever saying, hey, this is what happened and we are cold this would be the number one thing that I would recommend you guys. If you take anything from this video, cause you've already got all this stuff. Some of this could be just reiterated Intel and heck, even talking to my camera crew here, most of these guys already know what it is as like their go-to layering system each and every day that they ride. And they've got an idea of what they're gonna take just as a precaution with the, with the knowledge that they've got space somewhere, backpack, tunnel bag, somewhere on their sled or their person where they can take that off and shed that if they need to. So most of us probably know what we're, what we're doing here today, but if you take away anything, it's understanding how freaking important something like this would be because being cold sucks. So being able to get to the outside world and make arrangements, have someone coming to get you, something like that would be really, really important. All right, so on those cold days, guys, a couple more examples here. This is, again, Marina Wool. This is a Marina Wool quarter zip. And you guys can look at some of these items. When we start getting into the more insulated pieces, I mean, you'd look at this thing like I do, and it's like I did. I wore this to a really fancy restaurant up in Jackson, and, and I mean, it's a finished piece. Well, this is also, and could be, a very crucial layering system if you ever needed it. As thick as this wool is, God help us on what that temperature looks like. I already run relatively warm, and so something like this, man, you'd have to either be really, really cold, or maybe it was a day where you're gonna do a ton of standing around. Maybe you're gonna go on a hike, you're gonna do something, but it's pretty low impact, and you're not really working up a sweat too hard, something like this might be the difference of whether you have a miserable freezing day or a really enjoyable day. So a merino wool quarter zip, and then there's all kinds of these cool like alloy jackets. Again, finished product. You could wear this thing, you know, operate riding, operate anything where you can actually take this and go wear it inside somewhere. Um, and it's definitely a finished piece. And again, an awesome way for us to layer. And this is, again, something that we're wearing. We've got our base layers on, and then we're kind of looking at our forecast or the temperature. Let's go ahead and throw that on before we throw our outerwear on, just as another layering uh, system, right? To, to keep us, keep our bodies regulated. I'm probably gonna take something like this off once I get to riding, riding. But man, for that cold, shady, dark trail ride going in, this could be pretty awesome. One of my favorite pieces of the year is this new Boulder Hybrid. And again, not unlike that alloy pant that I was showing you guys, you've got like this quilted insulated center section, keeping our core nice and cozy. And then it's got this real thin, you know, sleeves from the shoulders down. I have, I think about in my past, how few times I've been out there and been like, man, my forearms are freezing. Like I just don't, ever think that that's ever happened. There's so much of this happening, right? Definitely had cold hands before, but never really in this part of my body have I ever been cold. So instead of, well, another option from a vest, you've got another layer that's here, relatively thin, again, some sort of synthetic poly material, but you just don't have a lot of insulation there because this part of our body's not getting cold. So another awesome piece, I would tell you that this is another finished piece that you'll find yourself wearing all the dang time. It does have a hood on it, but I tell you that the hood being thin enough, if you needed this in a pinch, just lay that hood inside of your outerwear and you've got an awesome mid layer. For the uber cold days, and again, can't, can't stress enough about the idea that these things are about as classy looking as they get, but for an uber, uber cold, cold day, when you know that a puffy jacket underneath your outerwear is gonna make that trail ride home so much freaking nicer versus just this race to get out because your body is freezing, 
having some sort of puffy. So the torque jacket remains sort of a go-to. And I even show you because of the type of material it is, you can stuff this thing down and put this thing literally in just any kind of pocket. In fact, it'll kind of stuff into its own pocket, put it in a tunnel bag, stuff it into your backpack somewhere. The hood is removable. I would say go ahead and leave the hood on there. This thing, full rescue situation, like you are freezing, freezing, freezing cold. Having something like this as a go-to in your kit, this is gonna be a life-saving uh, mid-layer. All right, guys, so that is a wrap. Um, I thought that this was important info, and, and, and like I had said before, to a lot of you guys that have been riding for a number of years, you have your kit. You know what's important to you. Most of us have got it down to like basically a science where you've got you know, a puffy jacket, you've got some sort of mid that you know you're gonna shed, we, we have these cold trail rides in, we have these opportunities, maybe we're having lunch, maybe we've got to fix a snowmobile, we got to do something where having some sort of that insulation is gonna be nice. The things that I've left out, we didn't talk about balaclavas, we didn't talk about a balaclava versus like a buff or a neck gaiter. I am a big fan of the buff. Are there times when I'm gonna wear the full blown magnum you know, put right up over the head, tuck it down into my, you know, my mid layers, even into my base layers, uh, big balaclava. And the answer is sure. I don't want to get frostbitten on my face. And there are definitely mornings where that is still considered a base layer. So remembering to pack those things. Sometimes I see riders getting so freaking hot and they, their, their head is sweating, their goggles are fouled, all of those things, all because they're trying to continue to wear that big balaclava. If that's all you brought, now you take that off and now you've got your neck and head exposed. And when it's cold enough, that's a kind of a miserable day too. I get it that your helmet kind of keeps things warm, but using a buff and having that in your handlebar bag or somewhere else, throw the buff on, now that's protecting your neck and even a portion of your ears and your head. Great way for us to regulate temperature inside of our helmet, thusly keeping the foam dry in and around our goggles so that we reduce the amount of fogging that we'll have with those. If that makes sense to you guys, I really hope it does. So base layers all the way from our toes back up to our heads, including those balaclavas. Hopefully you guys like this video. You guys remember the drill. Leave those questions and comments and we see you next time.